I'm Scott Allen Miller. This is Sam IT, the intersection of information technology and business. Sometimes we do analysis of occurrences in the industry, and that's exactly what we're going to do today. The CDK outage that primarily impacted car dealerships has been big news and very impactful, not just to car dealerships, but to the U.S. economy. This is a major, major event overall as far as its impact, although we don't have good reason to believe that the actual hack was that big. We have nothing that indicates anything more than the possibility that someone opened an email with a bad link in it or a bad attachment. It could be that simple. We have absolutely nothing to suggest that that was not what happened. But in a recent video, I mentioned that we know that they must have not had backups because uh, we know that the event was listed as a ransomware event and that they were unable to uh, begin restores right away. And then there was a rumor that they were paying the ransom. Now, we don't know for sure that they paid the ransom. That's not something that they have disclosed to the best of my knowledge. But we have very, very, very good indicators that that is what happened, both from things that they have said, rumors that have been released, and the actions that we have seen. Had they had backups, restores would have been, one, immediate. Not that they would have been back up and running immediately, but they would have had some data very quickly, and they would have, this is standard business logic, they would have been so quick to point out that they had backups. They needed to announced that they had verified their backups and were doing restores as quickly as possible. At no point did they make this statement, to the best of my knowledge, that they had backups. There was suggestions and that they had said in private that they did not have backups. Their behavior was 100% that they did not have backups and they did nothing to belay those fears. Anybody who had backups would have wanted to get that news out to their customers and potential customers as quickly as possible. Everything else after that point, if they said, look, we can prove we have backups, it's gonna take some time. This is a lot of damage. It's, we weren't anticipating an outage of this scale. We're gonna be slow to respond, but don't worry, we're safe. We have backups. We're not being ransomed. Everything's good. They needed to do that, right? They wanted to do that so badly, but the reason that they didn't it had to be because they couldn't. There's no way they're so foolish as to have been able to show that they were functionally backed up and wouldn't have bragged about it. They would never have let this hit the news in the way that they did. They would have restored from backup and said, you know, we, you're, we're all good. Instead, they let everyone go completely believing, for obvious reasons, that they had been ransomed effectively because they must have been. Now, someone said, well, maybe they didn't pay the ransom. We don't know that, that it was paid because it was a lack of backups. They may have paid because of, uh, they didn't say this word, but because of blackmail, uh, because the data had been stolen. And it was, it was uh, potentially going to be released and they paid to get the data back. So that's a great theory. But I'm 100% convinced that that is not true, and here's why. One, there was absolutely no reason to believe or suggest that an additional blackmail event has taken place. We have no reason to think that. There was no claim uh, from rumors. There was no statement made by uh, CDK. There is absolutely nothing that suggests that data was extricated. Nothing suggests that data was stolen. Ransomware, the term ransomware has zero implication that data was stolen. Those are very different things. To uh, ransom data, generally what you do is you encrypt it in place. You don't take the data somewhere else and then people pay to get it back. It's not like a physical box from Amazon that you steal off someone's porch and you say, give me 10 bucks or I'm just gonna keep it. All right? It doesn't work that way, it's nothing like that. This is a giant amount of data. We're talking terabytes for sure, possibly hundreds of terabytes, maybe petabytes, probably not, but possibly. We're talking very large amounts of data, which is why we could excuse a delay in restores if there was a simple issue of backups. They would have done some backup to show that it was working, give customers some confidence that they had some path forward, and then they would have begun the long process and at some point given an estimate. Like This is so straightforward. There's no possible way they didn't know how to do that should they have had backups. But given the amount of data that they must have, the idea that that someone snuck in, took it all out, and encrypted it all at the same time, while it's not impossible to think that, there is absolutely no reason to believe it happened. It's like saying that someone uh, was in a bank and, and you know swiped something off of a table and ran out the door, and then saying, we think they also broke into the vault. And you're like, well, it's not 
actually impossible that they also broke into the vault, but do we have a reason to think they broke into the vault? Was the vault open? Was something missing? No, we have no indication that the vault was touched. Everything is fine. No one has made any such claim, but some outside person says, I'm pretty sure they got into the vault. No, we, we they did not get into the vault, right? Pulling out the data that CDK has would have been very noticeable. Now, we know that CDK doesn't have a qualified IT team. We know that their management isn't monitoring things. We know their management is not taking security seriously. So, yeah, the suggestion that they may have snuck out insane amounts of data over a period of time is not without merit that the possibility exists far in excess of what would exist in any normal managed environment with competent staff and management uh, and owners that actually cared about the data because we, we can prove that those things did not exist, right? They cannot make the claim that they were trying to be secure. They can't even suggest such a thing, right? That is, that is impossible for them given the things that are known about the environment. It is out of the question. But it's still extremely difficult to imagine the amount of data that would have to be stolen being stolen, and we simply have no basis for it. So that's the first piece. We're just completely speculative that an additional attack that has nothing to do with the attack we're, that we're dealing with happened. Because remember, we have no reason to believe they were hacked. right? Some people jump on that. A lot of people throw terms around and say it's a huge hack. It's a cyber attack. It's not. There's absolutely... As a hundred percent, no implication of such a thing. It does not mean it couldn't have been what happened, but there is nothing that suggests that happened. This is almost certainly simply someone opening an email attachment or clicking on a link that they should have because the environment wasn't secured because it was by the book exposed for ransomware. It was essentially inviting the very standard script kitty or easier type things. There was. The chances that a focused attack is what got them, almost zero, because it doesn't need that. They would have been expected to have been ransomed. Whoever designed this network had to expect that a general ransomware event would eventually happen because absolutely every aspect of the system that we know about was designed to invite it as much as reasonably possible. Everything. So this was an expected event, right? It has to be seen that way. But that the environment had a targeted attack and someone got in and actually stole the data, extremely difficult, very unlikely, and we would almost certainly know about it because if they believe that was true, right, a ransomware does not, event does not have to be disclosed because there's no breach. But a breach where the data is stolen or believed to be stolen is required to be reported because this has got personal identifiable information. This has got credit cards. It's got social security numbers. It's got a lot of financial stuff that has to, by law, be disclosed, and it has not. Now, there's a time period for that. There's a lot of things, but you generally are going to have known at this point they would not be hiding that because of legal problems, right? The other stuff they can try to get away from, right? They can be like, look, our customers obviously knew we were insecure. There's no way to blame us. They were aware. And they have a point, right? There's, you know, uh, investors in the dealerships would have to go after their dealerships that the dealerships clearly knew what they were doing. There's no way to have deployed the software. They, every dealership knew that the open VPNs were going in. Everyone knew how the installer worked. Everyone knew there was no security. Everyone knew they were exposed to CDK and to the other dealerships. Everyone knew, right? Nobody calling themselves IT, no one calling themselves a CEO isn't able to comprehend how that works. Like, that's just not plausible. So clearly the people who are doing it now, you know, loads, loads of IT people who are deploying it were told to do so by management. Management took over the IT role, took over the IT decision making. The people, the troops on the ground, they have no choice. That means whoever made that decision took on the role of IT decision maker. That's where the culpability goes, right? Whoever overrode uh, industry standards, whoever overrode security concerns, whoever overrode requirements for protecting customer data and so forth. And of course, PCI compliance is going to be a big thing because obviously this could not have been deployed in a PCI compliant environment. So there's going to be, I'm sure, some investigations for that at, at a lot of levels. But we have absolutely nothing that suggests that blackmail or that data extrication has happened. Doesn't make it impossible, but we can't jump to that conclusion. That's the first piece. The second piece is that's not a very effective threat because if you do pull that data out in a breach, that customer, if that is real data, is required, once they've been blackmailed, to disclose, period. It doesn't matter if they pay or not. The damage is done. They're stuck 
reporting because the data is out there. So that's point two. It doesn't protect against the real impact, which is every single person whose data is in there has to be, you know, contacted. They have to be warned. They have to be paid. There's all kinds of things that happen when there's a breach like this. And so that is not something that they would want to pay to get nothing out. It wouldn't protect them. The data that's going to be released is invaluable, right? CDK doesn't have valuable data. Their software's not worth anything, literally worth nothing, right? Their, the data that's in there is means nothing to them. And if it was customer data and was stolen, they have to go through all the damage of it being stolen, regardless of whether they pay a ransom. So uh, uh, I'm sorry, a blackmail, not a ransom, right? Ransoms is when you pay for your data back. Blackmail is when you pay for it not to be released. The idea that was stated, so that was point two. So point three, the idea that was stated was that they would give the data back. You know, he actually said they paid to get the data back from a blackmail event, but that's not how a blackmail event works. In a blackmail data event, when you pay, they simply promise to not release your data to the public. That's it, you're dealing with someone who just stole your data, someone who is already breaking the law, someone who already broke in and stole it from you, then is threatening you, so there's crime after crime after crime, now they're threatening you that if you don't pay extra, they're going to do something harmful with your data. But if you could pay to stop them from doing something harmful, you could have paid them to stop the, doing the first things, right? This is already a criminal organization. You have literally zero expectation that they won't still release the data or blackmail you further in the future. Paying a, a blackmail for digital data has zero value. No one in their right mind would ever consider even discussing such a thing. Once that data is out there, it is already breached. That reporting must already happen. The damage is already done. There's no value in stopping further release, and there's no way by paying a blackmail to encourage not having a further release. In fact, by paying the blackmail increases the value of continuing to threaten you and continuing attacking you. By paying the ransomware here already, right, they've admitted to the world, assuming that they actually paid the ransom, we can't actually prove that. I don't believe it has been admitted publicly, but the rumor is that they did pay and the behavior is that they did pay. That has now announced to every organization that this is an organization with no skills, no management that's overseeing things, no concern for security. Just because they now had this event, and of course they're going to be trying to shore up uh, their, their network, we know they don't have the chops in-house. There's no reasonable way that qualified people to really deal with this problem exist at all the layers because they would have to rewrite their software. They'd have to redesign their networking. They'd have to have different skill sets for systems administration. They'd have to have different networking skills. Now, it's possible in good organizations, people can just shift, right? You don't need to pick administrators by the technology. You don't need to pick network administrators by the technology. In a good shop, you could make a 100% shift in all your tech overnight and people just don't bat an eye. But Good shops also don't do these things. And people who are good don't work in bad shops in most cases. They, you know, shops like CDK, there's no reason for them to pay well. They don't need the skills. They're not utilizing them, right? It's super frustrating for someone who knows what they're doing to put up with politics over profits, right? It, that stuff is really, really frustrating to qualified people who are like, why am I here and not using my knowledge, not using my experience, not you, no one's listening to my advice. There's no function. All you need is whoever's at the top making these bad decisions, pushing it down, and everyone else is just people getting paid to act like an IT department. Of course, they're servicing desktops and doing basic stuff, but they're basically what we call button pushers. They're not decision makers. Somebody at the top made really bad decisions, and everyone under them either had to leave and go someplace that respected their clients and respected the work that they did, or stay and accept the money that they're getting. And yeah, some people are stuck. There aren't enough jobs. This happens to be who's local. But anyone who's really good, there's always IT jobs out there, right? So, yeah, they may be stuck for a little while, but you expect the majority of good people to move on relatively quickly. Of course, there's always someone who just got there, didn't know how bad the environment was, hadn't had a chance to move on yet. Some people get complacent, and it's the frog in the boiling water. There's a lot of reasons why good people stay behind, but you're not going to have very many of them in a bad environment. And this isn't just a bad environment. This is a train wreck environment. This is, by the book, how bad bad can be environment based on the things we know. So, absolutely, no reasonable possibility that a blackmail event was involved. No reason whatsoever 
to think that it was based on anything that happened, right? They did not say, we have no, no linkage to suggest it as a possibility. It doesn't rule it out. We don't have some proof that it didn't happen, but we have no proof that they weren't hit by a meteor either, but we also can assume that didn't happen. Had they been taken out by a meteor, they would have disclosed that this was an unforeseeable event. We were not hacked. We did our jobs well, and a meteor took out our facility. What can we do, right? And everyone would say, yeah, what could you do, right? They'd all be on the same page, right? So they're not, that, that kind of stuff is not happening. We can't jump to the, well, you can't prove it didn't happen. Here's some wild thing that makes no sense. But I understand why people think that because companies want you to think that. They always want you to have this, well, maybe they did things well. No, they didn't, right? But they want you to have this, this kind of plausible doubt. It's not plausible doubt, right? It's irrational excuses trying to defend bad behavior, which humans do, right? This is a Important thing, we all see our own failures in CDK and other companies like this. We all go, well, there's been times that I wasn't completely sure of my backups. And uh, there's times that I just listened to my boss. There's times that my boss made absolutely insane calls. And were we supposed to push back harder? Is he really culpable for throwing away investors' money? Did he really put people at this level of risk and just didn't have the worst case scenario happen? We just got lucky? Did I just move on before disaster struck? In many cases, we have to say yes. We often want to defend ourselves and others for their failures because it feels good. We want to believe that people are genuinely good and trying hard and that people aren't just being lazy, that people aren't intentionally putting customers at risk, that that's not really what's happening, but that is really what's happening in a very large number of cases. We're just taking risks and thinking, well, maybe I'll move on by the time things go wrong, or maybe no one will realize that uh, I'll, I'll have made this decision, or um, you know, we'll simply say, oh, it's not about a blame game. But in a case like this, it is about blame. This is not an accident. Right. These things were designed for this. This was predictable. This was predicted. Right. Someone said Monday morning quarterbacking, anything but years and years and years of warning. And as you see from the comments, years of warning from everybody. So many people commenting. We knew we said from the beginning, no one listened, no one listened, no one listened, no one listened. That is the story here. But the important thing that we know from this particular talk, ransomware is essentially guaranteed to have happened. Blackmail is essentially guaranteed not to have happened. We don't believe, we have no reason to believe, no reason to suggest that data was extricated. So we think we're safe there. So, but that is a, they got lucky if that's the case. Thanks for joining me, like and subscribe. If you'd like to help support the work that we do here, you can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Al Miller. If you'd like to learn more about the topics here, I did write a book. Uh, Linux administration best practices from Pact Publishing. It would be amazing if you went to Amazon and bought yourself a copy, digital or print, that helps support me and makes me feel very good about the work that we're doing here. And of course, uh, watch more videos and get in the comments, ask your questions uh, and, and get involved. We've been doing this for a long time, but I'm working very hard to get it back into regular release. Thanks for joining me. I'll see you all next time.